And so yep. I think people, I think people are very misleading in the fact that they're um, they're so lenient because they want to get somebody or and then that's not really who they are and that that's not who i am so for me not addressing that would be totally against my ethical code and my ethos so um i'm i have done everything wrong in business in 12 years like everything you name it i've messed up payroll processes sales like hiring you name it Mm. i've never been late and so what i teach is if you do not control controllables, because there are very few controllables, we, we hardly control anything, really. But so there are very, very few controllables, and if you don't control those, you're out of control. So, so um, trust me, I know what you're saying. Time, I'm gonna do the interview. I'm gonna do the interview. But next time, what I would tell you to do, click the link and figure it out before. Like, don't don't worry about whether or not you show up in the room 30 minutes or who cares. Okay. If, some, if someone would ever tell you, Mike, hey, Mike. We're not going to hire you because you were too early. Man, why would you want to be there anyway? I don't know. Uh, that's a good point. I, I mean... The most successful person on the planet, I'll bet you everything I have, you find me the successful person that's self-made that says timeliness isn't important. I mean, trust me, I've, uh, I've, I've, so I'm a really dependable person. I've never actually skipped a single cl- uh, college class. I've never skipped a, elementary through college. I've never skipped a class. I was, I'm almost never late. Um, I'm very dependable and responsible. So that's one thing about me that uh, is like just a fact. I just had a little bit of technical difficulty today, but I know what you're saying and I completely understand and everything. And it won't happen again. Yeah, I'm just addressing it. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. Just, again, I, I, mistakes are okay. It's, it's, I had the same issue, right? We, like these guys have been on, they're, they're learning how to interview. That's why they're watching, right? Mm. So I, we had the same issue with other candidates, but other candidates don't take ownership of it. And so the interview ends. Oh, really? Jesus. Oh, my God. Owning your mistake is not okay. Yeah. I mean, I make I make a decent amount of mistakes. I mean, I've... I like to think I've always went on the right path in life. Just like I've had like a lot of like hardships in my life. Just like I was like bullied a lot in school, all my entire schooling. Um, you maybe wouldn't think that now, seeing me now, but like back then I got bullied a lot, and I had was like mentally and physically abused by my family my entire life. So I've like had to overcome a lot of hardships in my way. But I I don't mind at all. I wake up every day and I try to just like uh figure out like the best the w- best way to better my life every day. I try to learn something new every day. Like even by like just watching videos or doing anything just about like stocks and investments and doing anything like that cuz just my whole goal is just to better my life. That's why I came to Texas and uh, I'm excited uh, to get into the interview. <laughs> yeah, so so let's do that. Let's transition there. So like, right, cool. you, you came came from Albany, New York, is that correct? Yeah. Uh well, a little town outside of Albany, uh called Avril Park, yeah. Oh, really? So you're happy to be out of there? T- <laughs> hmm. I'm, I'm in Texas, aren't I? So, yeah, Texas, uh, best state. Better, better weather, better pay, better, better taxes. So mm-hmm. uh, let's see here. So talk to me what you're doing. So you, so you graduated with your master's. Uh, when I was 21. Go yeah. from 29. So there's some gaps here, so you got to walk me through. So you graduated here. Yeah, I was working. So basically, uh, it's sales. Um, I was the top salesman in the entire country with NRG. And it's funny because uh, people from Texas used to visit up in New York. And they'd be like, oh, you know, NRG Stadium. So they're like, oh, my God, NRG Stadium is down there in Texas. And I'm like, and now I'm fine. I'm in Texas. Coincidence, kind of. It's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I was the top salesman for them. I've worked at so many different jobs, all with like customer service and sales. So I'm pretty good at talking to people. I'm good at conversations. Like I'm pretty confident in myself and that kind of stuff. Um all, all my jobs have been customer related. I worked at the president's office for and at the College of St. Rose. I've been um, I've done wedding wedding assistant stuff. Like I've gotten weddings ready. I've um, I've done all. I've been at Aero Pastel so for like uh, about like almost a year. And man, they do not pay you good over there. So yeah, I did that all while working, and I I mean uh, all while doing school. So I I was taking like seven classes per semester. That's why I got done when I was uh, twenty one with my master's degree because I wanted to just do everything as fast as possible to get out to get out in the workforce. But then after I got my master's degree, I realized they don't care about that. They only care about experience. And I'm like, what can, can I like? I I just I want someone to take an opportunity on me. Like I think I'm a very intelligent person. I I know what I'm doing in life, and I just want someone to take an opportunity on me. Um, and I really want a company where I can move up and, um, 
move up in the company if I work hard, you know? Working harder, that's fine. I don't care. I want that. I want to be able to wake up and have purpose. Every- Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, I saw it the other day. Responsibility. Now you can cheat on a spouse. If you don't have a spouse, you can't cheat on a spouse. That's what I always said. I'm like, I have never cheated on anyone. Because <laughs> so, I've never had them. But, but, but I mean, like, again, most of like, kids. I, I got two kids. What's the positive? Well, I mean, you're creating another human. That's positive, right? It's, it's your children. What's the negative? The cost, the attitudes. Are you going to mess these kids up? You know? Because, like, where's, where's the book? It's a tank. Chance you have to take. I mean, it's just a chance you have to take, and you just have to hope it goes good and put in your effort and hard work, and that's all you can do. I mean, yeah, I think about the downfalls of everything in my life. I'm, th- I'm always thinking 100 steps ahead of whatever I'm doing. Like, like I think, oh, if I go out tonight, what could happen? Am I going to waste my time? Is it like, is it going to be boring? Is it, is it going to be productive for me? Like, I think of all this stuff for everything I do. So, like, I mean, for me. I don't get bothered by like customer complaints or nothing really bothers me anymore because just because of the, the fact that I had been bullied my whole life, I let everything just roll off my shoulders. I'm very easygoing. So like whatever does happen, I can take it. Um, and it Mike, does. Mike, 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 Mike. Like I'm, I'm asking you though, it's just like you keep sharing that background, but I'm like, here, I never asked you that yet. I was going to ask you, but like, and here, here's the thing. I think everybody has a past. I do. And I'm not discrediting yours. By no means, shape, or form, because I don't know you. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't, I, so I, I can't discredit what I do not know. That would be so ignorant. Mm. So that's not what I'm doing. But I am asking you a specific question, and so that 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 that's what I would like answer. I'm gonna learn the other stuff here, but like I'm not I'm not I'm not getting the question I'm asking answer. Yeah, I don't think I know the answer to it. I don't know what the negative. Okay, okay. Be- so the, the negative to growth, right? The 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 antithesis of growth is it's on you. Now, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, I'm good with that. I'm like, no, no. It's, it's nice to be able to blame somebody else. It is. It's convenient. At the previous job, said, man, they didn't pay well. That's their fault. <laughs> so, like, it's, it's nice to be able to say, like, yeah, they didn't, they didn't pay me well. Okay, that's their fault. That's their fault. But then there's no growth. So, so, so again, with growth comes accountability. Because... That's why most people don't have it. It's not because it's not available. Growth is available. We live in America, for God's sakes. Like, growth is available. I love America. It's available and it's abundant. Why don't people have it? A lot of reasons. Anyone else to blame. It's, it's nice to go. Like, so, for example, my company's not doing well. I can't blame anybody else. It's, it's me. Like, I, I look in the mirror, I'm like, either you suck today, right? <laughs> or, or you killed it today, right? Yeah. But, like, I, I have no one to blame. My wife works at Exxon. Man, she can blame everybody. The CEO, she works in the legal department. She, she can blame the, the general counsel. She can blame the client. She can blame the judge. She, like, she literally can blame everyone. Yeah. I, um, there's no growth, but there's no growth. Well, that's what I said. I, 
I'm always accountable. I don't really care. As long as I'm doing the job and I just want to be given that opportunity to where I can even be held ac- accountable in the first place because I know I'm going to do a good job at whatever I'm doing because especially at something like I'm passionate about and 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 something like that because I, that's what I want to do every day I wake up and I'm like, I want something to be held accountable for, whatever it is. And like I'm buying a house now and uh, I'm trying to progress my life. I'm making steps to progress my life no matter what I'm doing. And a good job that I can be accountable for is one of those steps. You're going to be hopped up on sugar with all that frosted flakes. And I'll give you some if you want, okay? I do have a lot of... Yeah, I, I live with a... I live, I live with a roommate right now, so I have to keep everything in my room where he takes it, so... That's why I can't wait to get my own house. Uh, yeah, for sure. Everyone needs their own space. Okay, so, um, okay, clear, clearly you have a gift of gab. Clearly you can talk to a brick wall. Clearly you probably have, you know, never had a problem making a friend. So, um, look, f- for me, opportunity lies within the individual, right? So this, this I, give, I give you the structure of us. Um, you know, pair on here has a master's degree. I don't care if you do or don't. It doesn't yeah, matter. Um, it doesn't matter. There are plenty of people that, that I've interviewed that have master's degrees that have done horrific. So, because Trust here, me. here's the reality, right? Um, even if I offered you a million dollars right now, I'll take still it. Wouldn't be able to <laughs> because here's why, right? I would ask you what question three was on your third final. You're like, what? Exactly. You, you have no clue. So, none of the things that you did, you can actually pull from and use. So, <laughs> why that would then equate to a higher level of earnings that always didn't make sense to me so um for me applied knowledge is the only accredited university that you need what you can apply and mm-hmm. so um i have people that have had geds and and 19 years old i'll perform the 35 year old with masters so what's the difference well the whole thing about well, the whole thing about it is the master's degree is supposed to show that you were responsible and accountable and went to class. That's basically all it shows. It doesn't show how smart you are at all. You learn nothing while getting your master's degree, to be completely honest with you. Um, but you you do learn to go to class every day, and that's why I said I'd never skip to class and, and do your work, and, and that's what you learn, basically. And, I mean, you do learn a little bit of stuff. If you have a good teacher or whatever, they, they can teach you a decent amount, especially if you take, like, a class that's actually going to teach you something. But, you know, even, like, the math classes, they don't even teach you much about the real – like, you're almost never going to use that math in the real world ever and even if you remember it you know so i know completely what you're saying you know if you're gonna you're not gonna remember the answer to a test or anything like that but it is just to show you're accountable you know sure what if i told you though i graduated with honors and i never went to class no then you're way smarter than i am what do you want not that smart though not that smart i i just again um for me i've i've always focused on practical right like I was the kid in in sixth grade that got put in detention because I asked my teacher why why can't because this is you know I'm, I'm forty years old so like oh. so you look younger when I'm in you know I was born in eighty two so when when I'm in you know fifth grade sixth grade we didn't the smartphone didn't come out until two thousand seven I graduated college in two thousand four so just 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 put this stuff in perspective for a second right yeah so. For me, sixth grade, there are no smartphones. No one has an iPhone, right? No one has any of that stuff. It's not invented yet. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything. No one even has a cell phone. So all we have are those old school Casio calculators that you probably never used. I I like those more. Yeah, so we we have that calculator, and I'm like, oh, this is great. This this does all the math. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 in fifth grade, okay? Teacher goes, well, we can't use it on the test. And I go, why? Why would we have to put that in our brains and learn that if we can just plug it in on this calculator? Mm. And Mrs. Stark, I'll never forget it, says to me, well, when you grow up, you're never going to have a calculator in your pocket at all times. <laughs> now, then, hold on, you're, you're, now you're talking about, right, early, early 1990s, like nine, 1990. Even, yeah. Right? So again iphone number one wasn't invented till 2007 so that's 17 years later so she's not like yeah she has no idea no idea no one has any idea yeah she would have been like steve jobs so but for me i was like i was thinking more i could have this calculator in my pocket 
Like, it's not that big. I can put it in my pocket at all times. Like, yeah. And so that's been me since I was a little kid. Like, mm-hmm. but, so we're going to spend all of our time studying something that literally this thing does yeah. for us. But that, that sounds very stupid to me. That doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And what's the value of the human? They would... So now, could I articulate it like that in fifth grade? No. But... It didn't make sense to me then. It doesn't make sense to me now. Mm-hmm. So for me, I'll give you the company structure. Well, there is no opportunity here for growth unless you can sell. Mm-hmm. If you can't sell and produce profit and revenue, I always ask the reverse question. What company would promote you into positions to handle anything besides you? Well, that's what I'm the best at. I'm the best at selling, so I wouldn't have a problem with that. And if I don't sell, then I stay for longer and and just do even more work. Cause and I know what I'm doing in in, in most things in sales, and I'm a, and I'm a fast learner. So whatever it is, if I can learn it within a day. Yeah, I don't. I, our sales aren't complex. Yeah. Like, I, I I honestly believe that like a very advanced seventh grader could crush our sale. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, a very advanced seventh grader, a normal high school. Should have hired me out of high school. <laughs> Our yeah. sale, Michael, like, is, is broken down into like just fundamentally simple. The challenge is not selling here, which is which always screws people up. They're like, "What's it? What is the challenge?" Well, the challenge is like personal discipline. Mm-hmm. Are you an overthinker? Are you going to cannibalize your own brain? Do you stay positive? Mm-hmm. That's not an easy thing to do. It's one of the hardest things to do, actually. Mm-hmm. It's really easy, especially in the world we live in today, right? I got CNN on here. So this the worst station. Be, like, there's so much negative crap. Yeah. Like, it's so easy to get jaded. So, well, the way I try to wake up every single day is, I realized my entire life I was waking up and just like being miserable. I'm like, what? Why am I doing that? And then I realized I can, I can choose to be happy. If I wake up, I can choose to 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 wake up and enjoy the shower, enjoy eating a little snack, enjoy doing these little things in life on my way to success. And that's what I realized way too late in life. But now I wake up every day and just try to enjoy the little things and on my way to success. And that's the way I look at it now. And now it's definitely not too late. I always talk about my life like it's already ended. I'm only 25. So, so yeah, that's the way I look at it now. And yeah. You know, I don't mind the thought of dying that much. As crazy as it sounds, I'm not scared to die. I'm not, I just think if it happens, it happens. And, and you know, you go to heaven and hopefully you go to heaven. I really hope you go to heaven because that would suck if you don't. But, um, so I'm not too afraid of dying, but like, yeah, I just try to live my life to the fullest every day and try to have as much fun as I can. And, you know, getting a good job and making friends. That's one thing I wanted too, is to be able to make friends in Texas since I just moved here. And like, I don't know too many people like, it's just somebody to like go hang out with and do stuff with. Uh, that's important to me too. So that's one of my goals too. Yeah, I mean we're creatures of connection, right? So like um, that's why solitary confinement is still a form of torture. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing that to myself right now. <laughs> and my room is my jail. So um, that's why COVID messed up a lot of people. It wasn't actually COVID that did it. It was. It was oh, I know. Um, you leave a person alone with their thoughts. They go crazy. So, yeah. Support system. Ground yourself with positive. Like if you have negative people around you, that's not going to help you at all. Yeah. So, um, if you have people with, like crapping on your goals and um, smoking weed every day and, and, and doing doing stupid things, that ain't going to help you. I've never that's had a never had a drop of alcohol. Never had a single smoke. So that's a good thing about one good thing about me that people probably don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's, it's pr- I don't care if you smoke, I don't care if you drink. I care if you're in control. Yeah. 
and I'm very mentally strong. Like, like I said, with everything I've been through and stuff, I'm mentally strong. So, like, I, like I said, nothing bothers me. And yeah, I'm sure if I, I could drink, I'm sure I could smoke. But I just choose not to, just because many reasons. <laughs> it costs a lot of money, it makes you fat, like puts you out of your senses. I like being in my senses. Like, I always like being in control of my own body. So that's important to me. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Are you though? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I well, I don't drink that much anymore. Um, but I do drink if like socially for for pleasure, not for not to escape pain. Yeah. If alcohol becomes a substance that you abuse, then it becomes toxic. Yeah. So, and I always said like when I when I get really rich, I'm gonna be drinking my wine on my private jet or something like that, just to try, just to like be funny, you know, just like just drink like some like I always see like drinks or whatever right out wherever I go, and I'm like, oh my god, that looks so good, and then I'm like, I could just drink that without the alcohol, and it would probably taste way better. So, hmm. yeah, I like the fruity drinks. Yeah, <laughs> all this stuff's kind of poison, huh? <laughs> yeah. I don't mind. So, like I said, the, the opportunity. I don't. I don't go into. Oh, you can do this and manage all this. Like, like, listen. We. What's your favorite sport? Your favorite sport? Well, I used to play soccer. I was really good at, it and I should have became a professional soccer player. <laughs> but I didn't work hard enough. Uh, in that, and I, I didn't enjoy it, so um, I was really good. And my coach told me I would definitely be able to play in college and everything, but then I never stuck with it. So. But yeah, I would say soccer. I appreciate the accountability, though. Most people don't say that they didn't work hard enough, so I. I yeah. Um, so, so for me, I'll, I'll, I can talk to you about soccer. So, you know, we, we have the English Premier League here. We have La Liga. We have the Bundesliga. Okay, we have all that. We have it. Okay, but it, it doesn't make sense to talk about the money involved with that unless you could pass the fitness test. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep, makes sense. So, so as much as everyone tells me, you know this. If you soccer growing up everyone's the fastest everyone's the next Messi everyone's the next Ronaldo mm -hmm. all right but, but they're not so again because the only way you actually see that is what let's put a ball out there and let's play because anybody really good at anything doesn't say they're good they just want to play like if you ask somebody are hey, you good at basketball they're like oh, let's, let's, let's just go play sometime you know that person is more likely to be good than the person if you ask hey are you good at basketball? Like, oh, I'm the best. I'm the truth. I'm the answer. I'm the next Michael Jordan. Like, probably not. Because anybody that's really good at their craft mm. will show you. Yeah. They're not going to tell you. And so, um, so for me, right, I learned show and tell in second grade. First show, then we talk. So, all right, we're going to give people a chance to show here. We're going to put you in sales. Now, our sales fundamentally, you said you were doing energy, right? Yeah, energy. So, were you doing that in a retail environment? What were you doing? Yeah, retail environment. I was in I was in Walmart, so it was even yeah, and I liked that a lot. Well, I didn't like that a lot. Walmart's not fun to be in, but it's probably better than going door to door. Probably, I would say because I mean, yeah, and do I mean I'm pretty sure I could sell door to door fine too. It's just like they trust you a little bit more when you're in Walmart. You get to say you're partnered with Walmart and all that kind of stuff, so it's, it works out pretty well. Mm, then I mean I'm sure you can do it. I, I don't I would believe you. I mean it's you can well, do that. It's not it's not anything you have to believe. I can show you the math. Yeah. Like um, again, I people don't trust Walmart or door to door, they trust the person. Right. Yeah. You build rapport with the person. I did that all the time. They would be they didn't want the sale at all. They were so mad about me even talking to them. And I'd just be like, really quick question for you. I know you're really busy today, but we're just doing this free in-store promotion for all national grid customers to lower your electricity bill. What's the last four of your social? You had to get the last four of their social and their phone number. So that could be pretty hard. And I did it every single time. So Yeah, we do that every day. So yeah. like, the difference between what we're selling and what you're selling is nothing. Like we sell for ATT, you sold energy. Um doesn't matter, same thing, six in one, half a dozen the other. So instead of selling energy plans and getting the bill and looking to see where you're locking rates and, and you know the wattage and all that stuff, right? So um, now potentially what you would do is you would look at their cell phone bill and see like what they're paying for cell phones and look at their internet and see what they're paying for internet and look at TV. So you really have a like triple threat pitch versus just a unilateral one of just energy, right? So mm -hmm. um both products, though, however, are very much necessity. You gotta have energy. Like you can't not have energy in your house, and you and you have to have cell phones, internet, TV. 
And so um, that's what we sell. And so the way that we pay is, is probably similar to the way that you got paid on energy. You probably got a commission and is an it, hourly wage, right? I only, no, the, this place was not a good job. They didn't pay any commission. Uh, I mean, they didn't pay any hourly uh, they only did commission and you would not know what sales you got paid on. So like I was, I, so I did the most sales in the country. I did 132 sales in one week and, um, I don't, I was supposed to be a paycheck of like $12,000. I got my paycheck. It was $1,600. So I, the, and there's no way like the HR department was one guy. Like, no, you don't get anything. This place was like really sketchy. Like I, like I don't, I like, I was like, I don't trust it. Like, show me the sales. He says, oh, they must've just been canceled out. And I'm like, I could understand that if it was like 10% of the sales, 20% of the sales, but like 80% of the sales, I feel like the guy was just stealing right out of her pockets because everybody at this company was saying this thing, like that this guy was like scamming them. And like, you had to do crazy amounts of work. And the craziest thing is when you got up to management, you would do more work and get less pay because you had less time to sell and you had to train people. So the whole thing was just, I think a scam and I'm so happy to be out of that company. And obviously because of Corona, we couldn't sell anymore. So, um, I mean, I couldn't work there anymore anyway, but yeah, I, I'm glad I'm not in that job anymore. Yeah. Montre, Montre can show you how to make 80% cancellations. Yeah. I, I can't wait to do that. <laughs> That's a good thing to learn. That'd be nice. It was the same setup at my other job. Is you made like two hundred dollars a week if you didn't sell anything, or every two weeks or something crazy. I don't know. And uh, yeah, it was the same. Yeah. Mm, does it though? This guy take advantage of like college students, you know? He was yeah. So, but. Yeah, of course. Again, I always get the average. I never get the superstar numbers because that's misleading. Yeah, that's good. So, um, eight hundred, sixteen hundred bucks a week, and then if that person can do that and show an affinity to do that, Mike, um, yeah, then then we start talking about whether or not it makes sense to move to management. Now, management is a different beast than what you were alluding to. So, me, I don't sell. I don't go into the stores anymore and sell. And so, um, what I'm paid to do is hire and develop. That's what I'm paid to do. Yeah. And so I, I, if I didn't make more doing that, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. No, that's, that's, I mean, that's where you want to be at. You don't want to be doing the selling anymore. You want to be training the people and teaching the people what to do and, um, in like building your company that way instead of selling yourself, of course. Yeah. And hire the people to sell. Yeah. And my job is to pick the right talent, develop it, and then we expand. So we've gone to nine locations in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, we work with different clients. We work with Vivint. Vivint's the door-to-door -door company we work with. Um, so some reps do Vivint. We have some reps that do Ver uh, Verizon, mm -hmm. business to business sales. Uh, we do at and in-store. Par our partnership is with two companies. Ah, uh, three, really. So we're partnered with mainly Kroger. So oh, okay. Kroger is mainly the company that we're partnered with, with at and because it's a grocery store. Like, there's so much traffic. So you stand in Kroger, then? Kroger's. Okay. Kroger's. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's our main partnership. Mm -hmm. And so same thing that you did with that. You, your job is to talk to people coming by. Now you're obviously AT and T swagged out, table, all that. You know, mm -hmm. I all that, all that stuff. So um, 
that should be very familiar with you. It's the same thing that I did, yeah. Exact same thing. Yeah. Is there benefits for this job? Like health insurance or... or... After 90 days, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, because I, I was having some health problems, so I, I was wondering. I really needed a job with health health insurance and stuff like that, so... Yeah, after 90 days. That's good. So, so W-2 employee, not 1099. Oh, okay. So we take care of the benefits. Um, That's good. Again, so the only thing that you can compare as the same is we sell inside our retail store. Right. So, well, the pay, the pay is the same, the commission based, and the yeah. But yeah, hopefully I'll, hopefully I'll know what I actually got paid on these t- this time. Well, you can't not. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm. Yeah. These guys will tell you. If you do your job, yeah. Yeah. There's no chance you're not going to get told exactly what like, you're getting paid. Yeah. So, um, I track it to the dollar. That's so, okay. These guys have. Um, these guys have a production. They have to fill out, and then I, I send them what they said they were making. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so always high. So yeah. So these guys, they have this stuff. Like this is what they reported they made, right? What they reported they made, mm-hmm. and then we, then track that against what is actually sent to us by AT and T. Right. And I send them, both, and then. So yeah. Um, again, transparency is the key to honesty, right? If you can see what things are coming from, then there's no questions. Yeah. So, um, and then we have a bunch of stuff. I think that we use Salesforce and Sales Plus to track everything as a CRM. So, okay. Uh, AT&T's paid a lot of money for that. So, I would even pay it. AT&T did. But um, <laughs> you got to be able to see and manage your sale, right? Because you got to make sure the customer gets their products. Yeah, that's a lot better than what I was doing. And yeah, there was no incentives to work even harder at that other job because you didn't get anything for making a lot of sales. You didn't get to go to the stores you want. You actually got sent to the worst stores because they're like, oh, he can make sales like farther away. You had to drive up to like five hours a day. It was crazy. And um, so I had to go to go to stores like five hours away. I'd get home at like 10 at night. And I'd be like, what's the incentive for me to be really good at sales? All my sales got canceled out or whatever anyways. I don't get any bonuses. I don't get health insurance. I don't get anything. So I'm like, this is not a good job. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds not good. Yeah. So. so. Um, okay. Any, any questions about that? Um, no questions. No. Okay. You explained a lot. My yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I gotta start making my emails just my name, huh? All right, let me see. Michael Owens a pretty famous soccer player. So. Oh, I've heard. Don't tell me how many times I've heard that one. Let me see. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't. Hasn't came yet. Let me see. Oh, got it now. Cool. Yep. All right. So, so Michael, what, what I need you to do is I need you to fill out that questionnaire, right? Okay. Um, Seem like you know what you're doing. That's, that, that's it. And listen, I'm not telling you it will at all. I'm not saying that at all. Yeah. That is your determination. And so that's the only reason why I ever tell people to work <laughs> here. That that you think by being around me, you're you're gonna benefit. I'm not gonna tell you you are. That, yeah. That's an individual decision. 
Yeah, well, I, I like that a lot. Like, you know, all the stuff you say, you seem, like, really knowledgeable. I mean, you've probably been through a lot, too. And, like, I uh, I saw, like, a picture of you guys or whatever, and I was like, oh, the, I, like, I would want to work with those people. That's why what I saw when I saw, when I saw the picture. So it's definitely a good sign. And just really quick, uh, do I, I have to put in my email and my phone number to get even get in? Okay. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. And it's just the Mike Mice one, obviously. Same email? Okay, cool. All right, great. Sounds good. All right, no. Awesome, no problem. All right, thanks for the call. Yep, cheers. All right, bye. <laughs> what I like to use is Zoom with Siri. No. I don't know what that means. This Dude, I just sent text. Oh my god. I just sent text to the interviewer. By accident. No. <laughs> no. Oh my god. I just sent text to the interviewer about being late. Instead of my friend, I was I was sending text to my friend. I thought, oh my god, they said, hey there, were you able to get it to work? And I thought it was my friend texting me, and I texted the interviewer. Oh my god, dude, this guy, bald Asian bitch, he was the biggest bitch, like he had. Such a condescending, condescending cuck attitude. I've never seen a bitch like that. And the job was just sales in stores like that. So horrible. My God, that's bad. Oh, my God. He was in glasses. You should hear. Dude, that's me. Big damn.